and welcome to Fresh Dialogues. I'm Allison Van Dickelen, talking to you from Silicon Valley, California. Fresh Dialogues is an interview series with a green focus. Each week, I interview business leaders and celebrities. This week on Fresh Dialogues, I talk to Vinod Kosla, co-founder of Sun Microsystems and influential venture capitalist. Vinod discusses clean tech bubbles, the solar thermal race, and why he's backing new clean energy technologies. Please excuse the champagne popping party atmosphere on the soundtrack. The interview was recorded at SD Forum's Visionary Awards on June 25th, 2009, where Vinod was the reluctant recipient of a Visionary Award. I'm with Vinod Kosla, one of the Visionary Award winners for 2009. Vinod, I want to congratulate you first of all. How does it feel? Thanks. Embarrassing. <laughs> so this is not your cup of tea to be the center of attention? Uh, not really. Okay. So first of all, I want to ask you about your lead in clean tech. You were one of the first venture capitalists to see the opportunity in green tech. Can you talk about where that motivation came from? Well, you know, in 2000, I started looking for something new, something different, and something large, and something amenable to technology disruption. And clean tech was one of those areas that popped up right away. So right after I gave a talk about the optical bubble in 2000, when the stock market was still high, I said I should be doing something other than, uh, than telecom. And that's when I started looking, and this is what popped out. And what was the first company that popped up for you? Was it just the, the sector in general? Well, um, in 2001 at Kleiner, we invested in Bloom Energy. And KR, who's going to be introducing me tonight, was one of the first clean tech investments I pursued. Is that looking good to you? Well, the company is very well funded, doing extremely well, and has been able to get great valuations in the marketplace. So I guess that's the precursor to success. Great. And where does this motivation come from? I mean, are you concerned about global warming first and foremost? Are you concerned about the planet? Or is it, here's a great economic opportunity? Well, I am definitely concerned about global warming. And I am definitely concerned about how 5 billion people enjoy the lifestyle that 500 million people do today uh, out of the 6.5 billion we have and the 9 billion we are going to have. So it's clearly that. But that itself creates the economic opportunity. So that concern about a crisis happening there creates the opportunity. And then we muddle through and hope we can find the right answer. And you've helped a lot of entrepreneurs along the way because I understand you're very involved in the companies that you invest in. Can you talk about how you've helped them? Well, as our website says, we're not in the venture capital business. We're in the venture assistance business. That's all I do. That's what our website says. And, and frankly, that's what I enjoy. I enjoy sort of being a coach and mentor to young entrepreneurs. And, and that, to me, is the most rewarding thing you could do. The fact that it's a way to make money is almost incidental at this stage. And on your website, it also says that you, are, you had a dream way back to bring soy milk to India. What is your dream today? Well, the dream clearly is to replace the four major emitters of carbon dioxide oil, coal, steel, and cement with much more uh, carbon-efficient technologies. And I think that's sort of the kind of new invention and innovation we need to really help the planet and create a whole new economic ecosystem. That's the dream. You, You were an early backer of biodiesel. And it's had some bad press because of deforestation, etc. Actually, we never did invest in biodiesel, so that's a misperception. Right. We never but, invested in any biodiesel company. But you were a strong advocate of it, I understand. No? No? No, no. I was always an advocate of uh, cellulosic fuels. But people have used my name as if I'm supporting biodiesel, like you mentioned. Yes. I'm generally against all food-based fuels. I see. Good to clarify that. Yes. And you're, you are an investor in Osara. Tell me about that investment and how that's looking for the future. Well, it's, it's looking, you know, Osara is pioneering a new kind of solar thermal technology yes. for large power plants or additions to existing power plants. And I like the fact that they can do a small add-on 
a $10 million add-on to an existing power plant so you can reduce the amount of coal you burn or the amount of natural gas you burn. So that's very neat about that technology. And you can also build a 200 megawatt power plant with the same technology. So I like that characteristic. And it's early in the solar thermal race, but uh, we'll see how things go. We are optimistic. And some people have already been talking about a clean energy bubble. Do you see that? Is that how you would typify the market with this huge downturn in VC funding in the first quarter of this year? Well, I was concerned about a clean energy bubble last year, and though this economic downturn that's happened is not good, it has helped slow down the bubble or pop it, and, and I think we'll ha hopefully have more reasonable development going forward. So you feel the bubble has popped? Well, I, I wouldn't say it was a bubble, but it was in danger of becoming a bubble, okay. and I think that danger is sort of lower and reduced and dis dissipated somewhat. But look, anytime greed starts to play, these things pop up again. So it's something we have to warn against. I think it was in 2003, I warned against the nanotechnology bubble, and that helped. I almost got sued for it. <laughs> Did you really? Uh, for saying nanotechnology was not ripe for public offerings, and there was a com couple of companies right to go public, and, and I think we need to avoid those bubbles because they're not productive for anybody. Yes, and what, what are your warnings today? Any warnings? Warnings about what? About potential future bubbles. Well, future. every thrust turns into a bubble, so it's something we have to just, you know, it happened with the railroads in the 1830s. Uh, it's happened with almost every new technology, and so we just have to be cautious. Right. And are you optimistic with the Obama administration in power now and their backing on clean energy? Yeah, I'm generally quite optimistic. I'm very optimistic that both uh, will find the technologies as well as the fact that we'll, we'll have a huge impact. Thank you very much. Thanks. Check out freshdialogues.com for interviews with Paul Krugman, Martin Sheen, Tom Friedman, and many others. <laughs>